Hi, I'm Laura McCabe, and I'm here to talk to you today about chenille stitch. So chenille is one of my favorite stitches as well. I use chenille, herringbone, peyote stitch. Those are kind of my go-to stitches. I do use some other ones as well, but I really like those basics. So chenille stitch is, it kind of appears to be like a netting, but it's done a little bit differently than a netting. So I wanna go over it today and just show you the basics. It can be done in different diameters. You can do thicker or thinner pieces of chenille. And I have a couple examples to show you of the chenille stitch. Um, first one is a Nautilus necklace that I've done. And here in the neck strap, I've used chenille. Um, it is really nice and fluid for neck straps, so it's a great option if you're looking for a neck strap. It's also faster to build than like a herringbone is. So herringbone, if you're working in 15s, will take you a while. A chenille stitch will be a little bit faster for you. So there's one example, and it's been embellished. You can see I've added embellishments to the surface there. A second example I have here is my fuchsia lariat necklace that I've done. And here in the necklace part, you can see this is chenille stitch. It's three ladder chenille stitch. And then I've also done two ladder chenille stitch here in the sort of the stems. I would call them the stems of the flowers. So we're gonna talk about both sizes today. I've actually done some basic uh, instructions for you that are below in the show notes. If you have a look, there's a PDF down there that you can print out, and that'll give you the basics of tubular chenille stitch. And then we're gonna go over the two different sizes that I use most commonly would be three ladder and two ladder. So we're gonna talk about those today. I've also pulled out a third example for you. This is my Egyptian Revival necklace that I've done, and the neck strap in this is chenille, but it's a little bit different looking because I've done it with uh, size 15s and with demi beads, so you get a little different look to it when you use the demi beads. You can use all different beads for chenille, so um, it gives you, you know, a lot of different textures to use the different beads. It's a great stitch. The other thing I'm going to tell you about chenille is it works very nicely with tubular herringbone. So for example, in this necklace, you can see I've started with tubular herringbone and then gone into chenille stitch. It's very easy to transition in and out of herringbone. So that's often how I'll start it. So that's how I'm going to start it today. I'm going to show you the start, but we're going to start off with a couple of rows of herringbone and then go into the chenille stitch. Okay, so let's do a little bit of chenille stitch here. Um, we're gonna start with a two ladder, I call it a two ladder chenille stitch, um, which is what you see here. Um, and then we're also gonna talk about the three ladder too, but we're gonna start with this one uh, to begin with. This, on this necklace here, I've done it in 15s. It looks fantastic in 15s, but it's also um, a little bit harder to see in a demo. So I thought for a demo, I would go with the size 11 beads. So you can see I have an A and a B pulled out here. So let me set this aside and we will get going on this. So as I mentioned previously, um, a great way to start your chenille stitch is actually to start it with a herringbone stitch because they, um, they work really nicely uh, with each other. So that's what we're going to do. It's the way the instructions are that I've written for you. Um, and we're going to start out, to begin with, we're going to be two, doing two ladder. So we need four times the number of ladders. So we're going to need our eight beads to start. So I have my eight beads on there. And I'm working with my 11A to begin with. With chenille stitch, it really helps to have two different colors. It's, it's quite tricky to see um, the chenille when you're all working all in the same color. So we'll be using two different colors for that. But initially I have my eight beads and I'm gonna go through one bead, the first bead to make a circle, but I'm not gonna tie a knot. So this is starting off the herringbone stitch. There we go. And so I'm gonna need to continue to hold on to that tail um, because, uh, you know, because otherwise it will just pull right through. And I leave probably about a 15 inch tail when I do this. Um, it gives you enough that you can easily add a clasp or you know, whatever you need to do um, on that end. So and now what we're gonna do to start our herringbone, we're gonna pick up two beads and go through the very next bead. So pick up two, go through the very next bead pull those in place and now I'm going to skip over two so one two keep the thread on the outside and go through the bead after that pick up two 
and go through the very next bead. And now I'm gonna skip two and go through the bead after that, which should be the bead that the tail thread is coming out of. And indeed it is, so you can see that there. Um, and I'm gonna go through that and up through one more bead, which is the first in that first set of two. So this is the herringbone start that I like to use. Um, and actually I did a little, um, a little tutorial on YouTube about herringbone. So if you wanna kind of uh, brush up on the herringbone, you can always uh, see that too. Um, and what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna fold it in half. So you can see I fold it in half and that kind of gives us that herringbone structure. And I just would recommend maybe doing a couple more rows of herringbone. So for the herringbone, pick up two beads, Go down the second one, and then you're gonna come over through, up through the first bead in this ladder over here, and you're gonna pick up your two beads, pick up your one, two, go down, and then again, come across, and we're gonna have that step up that I like to do in the herringbone. So when you come across here, you're gonna go up through two beads. It only happens at the end of every round, but you'll go up through the two beads there. That's your step up. And I'll just do one more round here of herringbone, just so that we have a little something to hold on to when we start the chenille stitch. So pick up two, go down, and then I'm gonna come out the first bead in that second ladder over here. I'm gonna pick up my two. Go down. And then I'm gonna do my, again, that step up where I'm coming up through the two beads. So you need to do that to keep everything. So it's going straight there. So step up through two, like that. So that is your herringbone start. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to chenille. And the great thing is you can transition in and out of herringbone um, into chenille and then back to herringbone. It, uh, it works up really nicely. So what I'm gonna do to start the chenille um, is I'm gonna start, there's two types of rounds with chenille. There's one round where you're adding uh, one bead at a time, and then the next round you'll be adding two at a time, and then one at a time. So let me take you through a few rows and you'll, you'll see how that works. So this is where having the two beads two colors of beads is really helpful. Um, you'll see in a moment how difficult it would be to see if we were just working in one color. So what we're gonna do for this first round, we're just gonna pick up one of those 11 beads, and I'm gonna go down the second bead in that herringbone ladder. So it's, a, it's essentially a herringbone stitch, except you're only adding one bead. So you can see, there we go. Now I'm gonna come up in that second ladder of herringbone, and I am going to pick up my 111B, and I'm gonna go down the second bead. So again, like a herringbone stitch, but only one bead being added. And now I'm gonna come across, and I have a step up through that 11A, and then through that 11B that I just added in this round. So that is an example of the round where you're just adding one bead at a time. Now the next round, we're gonna switch over to adding two, and it's quite easy. You're just gonna pick up two beads. We're gonna go back to our 11As, go through the single bead on the other side there. So just adding two between the single beads. So we're gonna do the same thing again. You're gonna pick up your two, go across, go through that single one, and then here's, here's what's essentially a step up where I'm coming out of the first of that set of two that we've just added on the first side there. So there you go. So there is another row. And now, after we've done one of these rows where we're adding two at a time, we're gonna switch back to where we're just adding that single bead, so that single 11B between the sets of two. So I'm gonna add one here, pull my thread through, come up and add my single one on the other side. There we go. And now I'm gonna come across, and again, I have that, that step up there. So I'm gonna come up through the green one, through the 11A, and out the 11B, just like we did before. There we go. 
Okay, so at this point I have done a few rows here and you can really start to see that pattern in the chenille, which is really quite a nice pattern and it's a great, um, it's a great choice of uh, stitches for anything that you want, sort of flexibility, you can see it really, it, it has really nice drape to it. Um, so I've done a few rows here. Now a couple of things, one is just like with herringbone, you do see the thread a little bit in chenille stitch, you can kind of see it here. I've used the white thread just because um, it really shows up a little bit better on camera when I'm demonstrating but if I were doing this you know for a uh, a necklace or whatever I'm making I would use a thread that better matched my beads because you want it to kind of blend in a little bit there so the other thing which is particularly the case with the two ladder it's it seems to be less a case with the three ladder uh, chenille but we're, we're doing the two ladder right now is that people have trouble with the tension they find it's like very very springy now it is a little bit netted you can see it's sort of like a netting but sometimes they're not happy because they feel like that the you know it's too much of a stretch in there so if you're feeling that way and you don't like the way the tension is working out if it's too loose for you there's a little trick and I want to show you that so you're going to get to the point where I've just kind of finished that round with the two beads added between the single beads here we go and now the next round is again going to be where you're just adding the 111 B but I want to show you a little trick here so added my 111 B there and now what I was doing previously is just coming right across and going up through that first 11 A over here but a little trick to kind of help increase the tension on it is to go down so what I can do is I can kind of dip down and go through that lower 11 B from that earlier round and then come up again here kind of pull it nice and tight and then put in another 11B on the top here. So again, just so you can see it on this side too, be the same thing. You're going to dip down into that lower bead and then come up and back and out. And that can kind of help increase your tension. Um, but like I said, with this two letter, people do find that more challenging. So, you know, be kind of conscious and, and put as much tension as you can on it. Um, and then if you, um, if you feel like that's not quite enough, you can switch over to stitching that way that I just showed you. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you is just how nicely this will transition back into herringbone. So if you decide you've done enough of the chenille and you're ready to do some herringbone, what you can do is, um, you want to end up on one of these rows where you're adding the two beads at a time. And I would step up just like I've been doing with the chenille. So I'm coming out the first in that first set of two there. Now, what you want to do is just resume herringbone just as you were doing before. So I would pick up my two beads and go down the second bead there. And that's a herringbone stitch. And come across over here. I can pick up my two beads. Got some escapists there. Pick up my two beads and do a herringbone stitch over here. And then all you have to do, again, like we were doing previously, is do that step up where you go up through the two beads there. And that finishes the round. And there you go. Now you're right back into herringbone. So you can do several rows of herringbone and then if you want to, switch back to the chenille stitch. So that right there is two ladder chenille. Okay, now we've done the two ladder chenille. Let's try a little three ladder chenille here. Um, so we're gonna do just like with the two ladder, we're gonna start with our herringbone and then we'll switch into the chenille stitch. And again, four beads for every ladder. So four times three, we have 12 beads on here. And we're just gonna circle around and go through that first bead. So it's gonna be the same type of start for the herringbone. And now what we're gonna do is pick up the two 11 A's go through the very next bead and then we're going to skip two beads thread on the outside so skip two go through the bead after that pick up two through the very next bead skip two through the bead after that up two, through the next bead, and then skip two, we're almost there, there we go, skip two, go through the bead after that, which should be 
the bead that your tail is coming out of. If I reach around there, you can see that's the same bead the tail's coming out of. And then I'm gonna go through one more for the step up. So there we go. And now we're gonna pull it. Kind of takes a little encouragement to get it to pop up into its herringbone shape. But if I do that, you can see there's my, my three little ladders going. So just like we did with the two ladder, I think it helps to do a couple of rows of just regular herringbone to kind of pull everything together. Gives you something to, uh, to hold on to too, which is useful when you're starting out. Um, so we're gonna do just a couple rows of herringbone here. And again, just like with the two ladder, you know, we had the step up at the end of every round. So don't forget your step up because that's important in keeping everything straight here. So this is one round and we're gonna do one more round. And like I mentioned before, a lot of people find the tension a little bit easier on the three ladder than on the two ladder. It's a little bit easier to keep it tighter. Um, so hopefully it won't give you as much trouble on this one. This tends to be the one I use the most actually, three ladder. Of course you could do as many ladders as you want really for chenille, but um, I tend to use this one most frequently for my necklaces. It's just, it's a nice uh, diameter for a necklace. So we're just coming around to the end of this fifth row here. Because you have the three rows when you start and we've done two more on top of it. So last stitch there. And I'm gonna do my step up and now we're gonna switch into chenille. Okay, so now that we have the five rows there, we're ready to switch into the chenille. And we're gonna do that initially, that first row here with the 11 Bs, where we're adding one of those atop each of those herringbone ladders. So I'm gonna add one there, gonna add another one. So it's exactly what we did with the two ladder. It's just the difference is you have three ladders rather than two. And then we're gonna add one more here. And then again, the same sort of step up that we were doing on the two ladder where you come over and you go up through that 11A and then through the 11B on top there. That finishes that round. Next round is gonna be one of those ones where you're adding your two 11As between each of those 11Bs. So same thing that we did before. Just add two between each of them. And then you're gonna switch back to the, to the round where you're adding the single 11 B's between each of those sets of two. And you're just gonna carry on like that. It's exactly sort of the same technique used in the two ladder. It's just, there's one extra ladder there. So I'll stitch for a little bit and then I'll come back and uh, show you what that looks like. And I will also, um, I think I'll finish this off with a little herringbone too. It, it's done the same way where you wanna make sure you end off with one of those rows with the sets of two and then you can just start your herringbone directly off of that. Okay, so here we go. We have our two ladder chenille and our three ladder chenille, um, both of which I've started with a herringbone and then I've transitioned into the chenille and then back into herringbone. So um, you can see how that works really nicely. Uh, you can do you know, one or the other or both stitches in a necklace. They work up really nicely. So there you go. Thanks for joining me today for this brief tutorial in chenille stitch. Be well, stay safe, and beat on.